So I recently came across these little AV transmitters that uh, are used normally uh, with a uh, wireless camera and they operate over the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and here you can insert some little jumpers to uh, choose the channel on which to uh, broadcast and there are four channels here and uh, I've got a jumper across at the minute to uh, broadcast on channel 1 and we'll have a look at that in a second they uh, have two wires here that I've uh, soldered on for the uh, positive and ground and they also got two more little jumpers here that you would normally solder on for the video signal and the audio now they come with this little dipole antenna here that's not balanced it has no uh, grounding whatsoever and in the specifications they uh, have a, um, a working broadcast um, distance of around 15 square meters now I'm sure and I'm certain that if we replace this dipole antenna with a uh, proper balanced one we should be able to extend that to at least 20 meters and uh, I was thinking that maybe we could actually use this as a jammer for the uh, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi spectrum and uh, what I'm going to do now I'm going to hook this up to some power on the breadboard and we'll have a look at the spectrum um, with a spectrum analyzer and uh, I'll show you why I think we can use this as a jammer so what I've got here on the laptop is a 2.4 gigahertz spectrum analyzer and I've connected a little AV transmitter up to this breadboard so I can put power into it now these work on voltage uh, of a minimum of 3.3 volts right up to just over 5 volts so they will operate quite happily on say uh, a USB power so it makes them quite versatile to what we can do with them now I'm going to add just got a battery pack here I'm going to add some power now and you should see I've got it uh, jumper to work on channel 1 and you should see that it takes up channels 1, 2 and 3 here on the spectrum analyzer so it's turned on at the moment and you should be able to see all this red here so that's completely taking over channels 1, 2 and 3 on the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and this gave me an idea that if we got four of these and wired them all up and took over all the channels across the spectrum then uh, we could possibly build ourselves a little jammer with one of these now I do want to point out the difference between interference and actual jamming now on the Wikipedia page it's got a uh, nice little description of uh, the difference between the two now if I went out and bought a video transmitter because I wanted to get some uh, video into a different room for instance and uh, I was transmitting that in my house and unknowingly I was interfering with my neighbors Wi-Fi then that's not jamming that's uh, interference because I'm I'm not doing it on purpose I'm not um, going out to deliberately um, cause him problems with his uh, Wi-Fi for instance but if I got one of these to purposely target my neighbor and I knew that his Wi-Fi was set to channel 1 so I set one of these to channel 1 to purposely interfere with his uh, Wi-Fi then that is called jamming so that's the difference between jamming and interference one is uh, not purposely doing it and the other one is deliberately doing it so that's the two different that's the difference between the, the two of those so taking a look at the where the dipole antenna is sold onto here um, the main body of it with no ground plane as it is in the minute it's soldered on there with that little round blob but just around it we've got actually uh, three ground planes that we can solder onto all these run to ground so uh, that along with a uh, better performing and designed antenna should give us some uh, better range so what we're going to do we're going to uh, remove the really crappy dipole antenna off those modules and replace it with a much better one now this is a dipole antenna that I've taken off a typical home router and uh, what you find inside is this now what we've got here is if you measure this metal sheath here from there right to the edge there it's 25 millimeters long and this here 
is also 25 millimeters long so that is really easy for us to copy and uh, we can make some dipole antennas for this project now this design I also use this quite a lot I've done some work with um, the Arduino and Zigbee and um, I've re always replaced the Zigbee antenna with uh, one of these and got much better range so they're actually quite easy to make and I'll show you how to make one so some of the materials we're going to need to construct one of these uh, little dipole antennas we're going to need some kind of metal sheathing like this now I, uh, I've got a um, telescopic antenna here that I've taken to pieces and uh, we can use some of this to uh, create our outer sheath which is the actual ground plane part of the antenna and for this um, driven element part of the antenna we can use some uh, laptop cable um, I believe this is LMR80 I'm not sure um, but uh, I've got a lot of this out of old laptops now normally when I talk about 2.4 gigahertz and uh, constructing antennas you need to use LMR cable and the reason for this is is that uh, 2.4 gigahertz signals will leak out of your uh, cheap crappy coaxial cable that you use in your house for um, things like uh, your satellite dish or the aerial on top of your house but uh, for this project we're wanting to create as much dirty noise as possible so it probably wouldn't be um, as bad to use uh, just some normal two core wire for this because uh, we want it to leak out as much as possible and create as much interference as we can but uh, normally when we're constructing antennas you always want to use LMR rated cable so to make one of these antennas if you uh, cut your metal sheathing 25 millimeters long and just uh, get a little bit of uh, fine sandpaper or emery paper and just just on the end there just get rid of all that chrome part of it and clean it up really nice ready for soldering and cut yourself a length of cable a lot longer than what you're going to need and insert it inside the sheathing and then if you measure off the end this is going to be our driven element and we want our driven element to be 25 millimeters long but if you measure it so here at 30 you're leaving yourself plenty of room for error so you can always trim it back later but uh, you can't add to it so once you get your wire exposed and this outer core here then uh, we need to push it back to create like a little blob here now we don't need all of this so here I've kind of pushed it back a little bit to create that blob and we're going to get rid of some of that because we don't need it all it'll just get in the way so we've got about half of it left now and what we need to do is push it down to create a little blob at the end down here and then we can take our metal sheath and what we need to do need to push all that down into the end of there and then we can add some solder to it so what we're actually doing here now is just working our way around and uh, feeding solder into all that outer core not too much and let it cool down a little bit in between applications because it heat can build up and it will melt this inner core which is going to be our driven element and then our antenna will be no good that's it it's got soldered up and uh, that will work fine the way it is now it's on there quite tight but uh, a little trick if you want to tidy that up a little bit is uh, use your soldering iron using the side here is just uh, gently run it around and you'll find it'll tidy your soldering up a little bit like so just be careful you don't keep it on too long again because heat will build up and melt that and it'll also burn your fingers so I'm now starting to think about how I'm going to uh, enclose all this and originally when I came up with this idea I was going to use an off-the-shelf project box but I've since decided I'm going to hide it all inside of a cigarette packet so obviously everything we build from now on has got to fit inside that cigarette packet now what I've got here I've got two pieces of the fiberglass board that I've got you can use thin MDF or plywood anything like that and 
on the back side of this I'm going to mount the antennas and then flip it around I'm using one of these it's a 3.7 volt lithium battery and really good thing about this it's got its own built-in charging circuit you can buy these off eBay lots of different places um, sell these so we're going to use that to power our little modules and our modules what I'm going to do I'm going to put some little risers on this board and we're going to fix our modules that way up onto that board there and then eventually we're going to fit a switch on here so we can turn it on and off and then uh, a little jack plug so uh, we can charge it up as well okay so here we have the uh, jammer and it's uh, nearly finished all the wiring's done anyway um, all the uh, little AV modules here are all wired up they uh, all go to this rail here that um, I've made out of a PCB strip I use them in prototypes now and again I just make a, a batch every now and again you can solder onto those so uh, I've used a piece of that double sided sticky taped it on top of the battery and uh, we've got a positive rail here and a negative rail so we've got all the positive wire and the negative wires connected up to that rail there we've got the battery underneath and the positive runs straight directly to that positive rail to all these AV transmitters here the negative on the battery runs to this pin here on the switch and then we've got another wire connected to that side of the pin which then connects up to the negative rail so when, when I throw the switch makes a contact and then we've got power flowing to the AV transmitters I've also taken a USB connector off an old motherboard and I've just hot glued that in place and we're going to use that to charge the lithium battery underneath here um, now although I've already said this lithium battery has got its own charge protection circuit built in I've put a little uh, 470k resistor on here just to bring that uh, voltage down a little bit more so the voltage actually coming in is around 4 volts so uh, we should be safe there so it's just a little bit of an extra safety thing there and uh, we've got it uh, all connected up sandwiched together in between this board and the antennas are on the back so it's all come together as a nice little package so uh, what we're going to do now is I've got another piece of board here and I'm going to fit that on top to protect the wiring but we'll be leaving the switch exposed so we can turn it on and also the charge the USB charge port here and then once we get it all connected up it should fit nicely into uh, an empty packet of cigarettes also these these nuts here I'm going to take those off and I've got some little plastic risers and uh, then we'll put the nuts on that side to connect it all up and hold it all together okay so what I've done here I've set up a little test um, over there I've got my phone and it's uh, at the moment it's uh, connected to that router over there so we'll be getting a nice strong signal I've also finished off the uh, Wi-Fi jammer here and I've put another cover over the top there to protect those electronics and the nice thing about it now it fits nicely into the cigarette packet like so so what I'm going to do I've got a little application on my phone that uh, is called Wi-Fi Finder and it gives a nice audible bleep when it's in range so you should be able to hear it there and see the needle it's right over nice strong signal which you'd expect with it being sat on top of the router put a spectrum analyzer here on my laptop and I'm going to turn the jammer on now and it's killed the network over there so we'll turn it off and it comes back again do that one more time, we'll turn it on
and you notice on the spectrum analyzer you've got this big red wall coming up across here in the real time view you can see how much red red means bad and also it's spiking all over here across the spectrum and turn it off and it'll connect the phone will connect to the network again there you go so one of the reasons why these video senders cause so much of a problem and interference on the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum is because as I've already mentioned channel 1 for instance takes up channels 1, 2 and 3 on the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and if I set uh, my little AV transmitter to channel 2 it then takes up 4, 5 and 6 and it just covers that entire part of the spectrum and uh, it causes so much noise that uh, anything else within its uh, proximity just can't get through and communicate over that spectrum so to explain what's actually going on when uh, we're using one of these AV transmitters as a signal jammer over to say we want to block Wi-Fi is if you think about two people here they're at a football match and they're right next to each other and they're having a normal conversation but this side's team suddenly score a goal so everybody around them suddenly jumps up and starts cheering the noise of the crowd will drown out their conversation even though they're stood next to each other now what uh, these two people would normally do if they wanted to carry on the conversation is start raising their voice or shouting at each other to get their message across but unfortunately um, a wireless router is not intelligent enough to sense that there's a lot of noise on the spectrum that they're broadcasting on and uh, raise their uh, wattage, their signal, say, to uh, try and uh, cut through all that noise. So uh, that's how, essentially, this Wi-Fi jammer works. It creates that much noise over the spectrum that uh, any devices within range find it impossible to communicate with the router. So here we've got the uh, jammer and it's charging off the laptop's USB and I've put a little red light on there to show when it's charging and we can use it at the same time while it's charging and there's that big red wall that I keep talking about up there so there's no uh, Wi-Fi signals getting through at all within a 20 meter radius of the jammer so I hope you go out and build one of these for yourself and if you do let me know in the comments and uh, if you enjoyed it please give it a big thumbs up and if you want to see more hacks like this and builds then please subscribe and uh, don't purposely go out to block anybody's Wi-Fi. It's just for educational purposes. And uh, take care, and uh, I'll catch you next time.